Hello everyone, welcome back to Lucky Crit. Recently, we received a brand new Nintendo Direct, which revealed the upcoming Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes game, which is another Fire Emblem Warriors game, but this time with a Three Houses flair. In this video, we'll be deeply analyzing this trailer and seeing everything that we can glean from it. The trailer starts off with what may be a Drestian soldiers marching and fighting. We then get a recreation of the flower being stomped like in the original Three Houses introduction scene. This moment is when Seros faces off against Nemesis in the far past, so we can tell that this game is still going to focus on some of these same events, unless this bit was just for the trailer to connect it to Three Houses as an homage. The title, Three Hopes, could be speaking to the hopes and wishes of the Three Lords, and perhaps in the story of this game, we could finally see them all coming together and facing a common threat instead of each other. Perhaps this could provide the golden ending to Three Houses that so many fans wanted ever since it was released. The cycle of this world, I will not allow it to perish with you. <laughs> this line is probably spoken by one of the new antagonist characters that we'll see more of later. Byleth having Sothis within, and then later fusing with Sothis into a progenitor god and influencing the various paths that ultimately change the cycle of the world, could make this line of dialogue imply that the antagonists of this game will not allow that to occur. But why do they want the cycle of the world as it currently is to continue? Now we can see gameplay of pre-timeskip Edelgard fighting some enemy soldiers. This illustrates that we will in fact get to play as the various lords in their pre-timeskip outfits, and could indicate that the timeskip is also present within the story of this game, unless they're just going to count the other looks as various outfits. But judging by how things worked in the past in the first Fire Emblem Warriors game, there was also class changing, so perhaps the timeskip outfits could indicate higher classes as well. In this scene, Edelgard is speaking to another student with purple hair, but it doesn't look like Lawrence from the few details that we can make out. Could this be the new antagonist character with purple hair, meaning that they were a student of the Officer's Academy of Garrick Mach before they opposed Byleth? Either that, or Lawrence has a way different haircut and more saturated purple hair this time around. Curiously, the minimaps on display so far have not shown other characters. This could mean that we're seeing some very early chapters where you're fighting solo, or don't know any of the other forces yet, or perhaps that minimap information is more obscured this time around. In the first Fire Emblem Warriors game, there were many characters present during battles, and their locations were clearly marked around the battlefield. This is also likely to be just a small fragment of a larger map, and the rest haven't been revealed yet, as the maps are typically way bigger and more labyrinthine. Claude's upside down jump, of course, also makes a comeback here. Edelgard's army on the map of Fodlin is advancing toward Garrick Mach from somewhere in the Leicester Alliance. It looks like the Great Bridge of Murden, which was a prominent location to reach and hold to begin the conquest of Leicester in the main game. So is the final destination for her Garrick Mach? Did she start in Adrestia and make her way here already? We can then see that participating in missions and receiving the capture reward will earn the player activity points, perhaps allowing them to accomplish more on the map of Fodlin before going into the next story chapter. This new world map menu is far different from the style of the mission maps present in the first Warriors game, and is actually more reminiscent of some of the other games in the Warriors series, like the Samurai Warriors or Empire games. Edelgard mentions seizing control of her fate in this next line of dialogue, and it's interesting to note that in the brand new redesign that we received of the three main lords, Edelgard is the only lord not to be using her relic weapon. While Dimitri is wielding the Arid Bar and Claude has the Fail Knot, Edelgard is not wielding Eimer. This could be because in the original Three Houses story, it was a gift from those who slither in the dark, and possibly augmented by them. Her new weapon prominently features the Crest of Saros, a weapon she probably wouldn't have used before out of pride, definitely indicating that this is a new story for her. Perhaps she is no longer working with or siding with those who slither in the dark at all, and thus alterations needed to be made. These new character designs are also reflected in those of their retainers, with Hubert rocking a new style and a sneaky hidden Hilda participating in this clash with her Freikugel relic weapon. While this isn't the best look, it's pretty clear that she's got a new hairstyle too. And if we know anything from the character outfits in the first game, we're definitely in for a bunch of fan service too. So that'll be fun. Bathing suit Dimitri time. After watching the Immaculate One shoot a fire blast, there's what looks to be a newly revamped Monica running across the screen. Curiously, she appears to be wearing the same style of earrings as Edelgard wears adorned in her hair. 
Is Monica a normal Black Eagle student this time around too? Because of the changes with those who slither in the dark? There's also this hand holding Dimitri's in this shot, and while it remains unclear who this might be, the brown armor might indicate that this could be to do. We know for a fact that Hubert and Hilda are going to be present in this game, so it's a no-brainer that Dudu will be here for sure. Then we have Claude and Dimitri going back to back in this scene, as well as the next shot showcasing what looks to be Edelgard and Dimitri about to clash before they're stopped in their tracks by Claude. All of this seems to indicate that while these characters will be hostile and oppose each other originally, they may end up combining forces to face off against a bigger threat by the end of the story. Kinda like Fire Emblem Warriors 1. Perhaps this really could be the golden path that fans wanted. We can then see Edelgard facing off against Judith, a character from the Leicester Alliance, who should have been playable in Three Houses but wasn't. And Dimitri is also facing off against Randolph from the Adrestian army. So further evidence here that even post time skip, these characters will be facing off against the other nation's armies. Edelgard also activates her Crest of Flames, so it appears that crests and their in-battle effects will also translate into the combat of this game as well. Demonic Beasts also make a comeback here, serving as what look to be bosses or mini-bosses on the map. Curiously, the UI here has two flame icons next to a brand new third bar under Claude's Muso or Special Attack bar. Could this represent some other kind of special ability? Dimitri is also shown at one point with two lance icons along with this bar. However, it's not always present, so perhaps it's something from later on. We also then see Geralt getting up, as if he was laying on the ground. This could indicate that the bad moment with Geralt that happens might not happen this time around. Please be playable, and please don't die in this game. Next, we get to see light bursting from the Immaculate One's mouth in a rather odd fashion. And now we finally get a better look at the new purple-haired character going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Byleth. This character dual wields swords, and looking more closely at the official game cover, it looks like there might be a Garth and Tech on one of their swords. Another mysterious character is placed on the cover diametrically opposed to Sothis, indicating that this could be a character intending to replace Sothis, while the purple-haired character is meant to replace Byleth. Could this be the Agarthans' plan? It's also worth noting that Byleth isn't using the Sword of the Creator in this fight, and the sword they are using gets shattered when this new character unleashes a power that causes shapes to appear on their face. But now that I know, I won't make the same mistake again. Claude has an interesting line here about making the same mistake again, so either something happens within the game's story and he learns from it, or this could be a weird, vague reference to the story of Three Houses, if somehow those moments are remembered by the characters, and this time they choose a different path. There will also be a limited edition version of the game launching alongside it, bare minimum for the European and Japanese markets. The one for the Americas has unfortunately yet to be shared out by Nintendo. This limited edition will include a game card, art book, tapestry map of Fodlin, five acrylic figurines, and a character postcard set. There's also this little line of info available on the official Nintendo page. Purchase the digital version of the game to receive regular visits from a friendly messenger owl outside your personal quarters. It'll gift you owl feathers that can be used to boost your support level with other characters. Okay, this looks like they want to incentivize buying the digital version of the game. But regardless, it seems Owl Feathers will also be in this game, and support conversations will be returning as in the first one. While players who purchase the physical copy will not have access to this feature, perhaps there will be other ways of acquiring Owl Feathers. Also, personal quarters? Will this be a hub with options for the player, or will this be more literally like the private quarters present in Fire Emblem Fates? Probably not, but maybe this is a place where support conversations can take place. We'll have to see. The Japanese website also reveals some further information about the game, including a save data bonus for playing the previous two Fire Emblem Switch titles, Fire Emblem Warriors and Fire Emblem Three Houses. With that save data on your console, you'll receive a one-time bonus gift. Amiibo are also featured here, like the first Warriors game and Three Houses, and it seems that here you'll be able to scan Amiibo to obtain items once again. You can scan each amiibo once per day, and a grand total of five different amiibo per day to receive even more items. Revenge is not a thing you take for someone else. You seek revenge to slake your rage and heal your wounded heart. I know you are prepared to do whatever that you must. So this also has a line here about revenge, which is kind of interesting because it doesn't seem like something that she would usually be talking about but there's not really that much we can glean from this just yet. We'll have to wait and see. 
And lastly, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes will release on the 24th of June, 2022. That's going to do it for this one, but thank you so much for watching. Be sure to slash the like button if you enjoyed this thorough look at the new trailer. Get subscribed so you can stay up to date on the latest Fire Emblem news. And be sure to let me know your thoughts on this information in the comment section down below. What are you most excited for about this game? I'd love to hear. I also want to thank the patrons for supporting the channel and helping make videos like this possible. You can also now become a channel member by clicking the join button down below and getting some cool and exclusive emotes. I'll be sure to do a bit more streaming in the near future, so stay tuned for that as well. And if you use alternative platforms like BitChute, Odyssey, or Rumble, be sure to follow Lucky Crit over there, as I'll be producing some exclusive content for those sites eventually that you won't be able to find on YouTube. And lastly, you can also follow our official Instagram account if you'd like. And I'll see you all next time.